amazing Dota 2 so far, and we've got one more before we decide our Red Bull Battlegrounds champion. All right, guys, it's time for that last game. Game five, winner walks away as the first ever Red Bull Battlegrounds Dota 2 champions. And with that, we get underway. But before we introduce the teams, I want to thank everyone in the crowd for being awesome. You guys have been amazing today. And I want to let you all know that there will be an after party. Everybody who's attended is invited. It will be at the Foundry. So we hope to see you there. We'll be there. A lot of the players hopefully will be. I imagine the team that wins almost certain to be there to celebrate. So once again, that's the Foundry, guys. But with that, let's go ahead and introduce our finalists in game five. Secret on the Radiant side. We're going to start here with Puppy. He'll be playing. What a surprise. The Dazzle once again. We've got Zai handling the Dark Seer. Nearby will be Arteezy on the Tiny. Kuroki on the Wisp. Something he used to play a lot and then rounding things off. S4 on the Razor. And looking at the opposition here on the Dire side. Invictus Gaming. We've got Chuan playing that Witch Doctor. Luo on the Earthshaker. Burning going to be playing the Weaver. Getting that early rune protection. Looks like he's headed to a side lane. 430 again on the Shadow Fiend. Once his bounty rune will get it. And then the Curveball Gods. It's been at least one kind of unexpected hero each game. And this time it's the Enigma that comes out last. And I, I feel like IG outside of this very much in their comfort zone with a lot of the picks that they're pulling out. But... Enigma is so good in a game like this. You're in a game five of deciding grand finals. These are the kind of games where a team's kind of tense up a little bit, more likely to go late game, and Enigma can take advantage of a slower pace. Not to mention, this is one of the few games Secret don't have the best lineup to end a game early. Unlike what we saw back in game one, where they got a really fast winner, what they tried to do in game three with the Undying Pugna. Yeah, they've got the pushing power of a Wisp Tiny, but this is a lineup that wants to go late game with Wisp plus Tiny. You have the Darkseid offering a huge late game team fight, and Razor kind of being that nice frontliner tempo control for the mid game so I feel like Enigma was a really clever pick to pull out. Yeah, it could be really impactful. Guys we've got another poll it's time to put your allegiances on the table. To vote go to redbullbattlegrounds.com we want to know what you think and right now it seems the people are favoring Secret. If you're an IG fan you'd better get involved and change that result right quick. Well, it's definitely saying something. Most of the analysts saying it's about a 50-50 draft, and coming into this series, it was maybe 60-40 in Secret's favor. But then, yeah, and then here we have the fancy. What are you talking yeah. about, Demon and Merlini? You don't know anything. Well, Secret do have that momentum. They just won a really close nail biter of a game four, and that's why coming to this finals, they're going to be the ones on a bit of a high. Well, for now, let's take a closer look at the lanes here. So we are seeing the Tiny Wisp mid, but the Shadow Fiend Witch Doctor dual lane, not easy for this duo to deal with. And if you go into the cast, you could easily get turned on. So looks like early on, about an even farm trade. And more importantly, perhaps the Shadow Fiend not as worried about getting dove and, yeah. and killed off early. Small things, but like really interesting to see Arteezy's item build coming out in the mid lane on Tiny. He started off with double circlets, already has upgraded one into a bracer. He's really prioritizing early stats and survivability in this mid lane, as well as boosting up his mana pool for his combo. Arteezy takes a cask, but oh, no bounces, and that'll be it. See a bounty room grab by the Earthshaker. Kuroki getting that sweet, sweet double damager. And early on can be a big difference maker. But in good news, 430 farming very well. And this Enigma God's not yeah. being contested. Well, Puppy knows this hero, and he's, he's hunting around. But He's now coming. I, I, I kind of like this timing. You, you can block at level 1, but normally a team with Enigma protects their jungle. He swoops in at a timing where IG are not really expecting him to be there and blocks two of Enigma's most important camps for his jungle. This is a really smart move. Puppy knows his hero back, back to front and, well, gonna punish Faith, trying to greedy jungle it out. All right, nicely done by Puppy. And in the end, gods, it looks like the scale only slightly tips even after that 75-25 start secret. They are the fan favorites here as far as who people expect to win. 69% voting for And Puppy for them. just leeching XP now. Gets up to level 3 with the help of the Enigma. He's being a menace here in the jungle. And this is just nice play because Raze is in a matchup where he can dominate 1v1 with Static Link. This is not a lane Lua is going to have a lot of fun in. Just 6 CS for now and that's probably not going to get much better. All he can really do is try and last it with Fissure it feels like. And... As a result, Secret can leave their supports to protect the mid lane, in the case of the Wisp, or have the Dazzle off in the jungle, as well as protecting top lane on the Daxia. Yeah, we'll see if there's any sort of de-warding attempt here, or if he just kind of sucks it up, assumes these are sentries, and waits it out. For now, yeah. Faith has been slowed down, though. Only level 3, just hits 4 at 3.5 minutes. 
This isn't that bad, but you'd really like to see him closer to level 5 and even starting to build towards level yep. 6. As Luo, he's in danger bottom lane. Nice force deals a lot of damage. Almost enough to die for a kill there, but not going to risk it. It doesn't have the move speed advantage. and He actually didn't have mana for a Fissure, which is where I thought he might, he might try for it. But as you mentioned, the move speed, a bit of a liability for that kill attempt. So, Lua will secure himself the 4 rune at bottom. Not going to get contested, which is nice for him to help just sustain that little bit of bottom lane presence. Also gets a bounty rune, so we'll be able to... He's getting tons of experience out of this lane, but... Doesn't feel like experience alone is going to cut it for his team. And that's one it, of those... It's an Earthshaker. Yes. It's, experience is definitely nice on the hero, but not as important as, like, say, the Dazzle pick, the Rubik we saw earlier. It's... It's much more about getting that blink dagger and, and being able to make early plays for your team. And that's where team started putting Earthshaker in the offlane, because you could send him in the offlane in this like 1v3 matchups, and as long as he leeches some XP, he can do a lot in the mid game, he can roam around a bit, but you give him a 1v1 matchup, he doesn't want to leave the lane because it's wasted experience at that point, and he's, he's not really uh, making the most out of it. On the Chuan, no follow-up for this. He does use the cask, though. They might try to make another move as 430 rotated Bonami was spotted by a Radiant Observer Ward. Probably the main reason why they went in. Meanwhile, Darkseer looking for a, a bit of creep cutting here top lane. Seems they're trying to keep burning trapped out near his tower and start to pressure it a little bit, but he's going to find Zai. This could be a little dangerous if he has that Sakuchi ready. I believe it's level 3. Or he used the time lapse to heal up, so I'm not going to risk any sort of chase. And Puppy still has that one skill point, which imagine we'll be going into that grave, so... That's a good point. Not an easy lane to get a kill. I mean, actually for either team. No real stun for the Weaver either. Faith's jungle is really being punished. He even soul rings, but you can't convert the mud goals because of like, the, a level problem. They're no longer magic immune, but Enigma's still unable to convert them. Uh-oh, RTZ gets caught though. Maledict comes out, but there's your overcharge. Tether able to heal him right back up, and he'll stay fine. Gets the early bracer, a little bit of extra tank ability. Meanwhile, I just keep on seeing this Earthshaker running for his life from S4, but uh, he's, he's okay for now. The constant static Lincoln. Faith will have his jungle camps unblocked soon, but he also doesn't know, are they sentries, are they observe wards blocking it? He doesn't, he, if he's constantly scouting it out, he's wasting a lot of his time and still just level four and a half. Normally you see that maybe four and a half minute level six from a free farming enigma, but that is not the case here. And I mean, like you said, just a very cool play from Puppy. Sure, you see a lot of teams contest Enigma jungle, either ganking him early or warding from the zero minute mark, but swooping in around that two, two and a half minute mark, dropping double century. That is a very uncom... I don't think I've ever actually seen yeah. that, to be honest. It's, in a lot of ways, just more. It, it's more potent because of the fact that you don't know when and where they are. And it's, at that point, you've already committed to not buying sentries to deward. It's the type of move you want to save for a game five yes. in the grand finals of Battlegrounds. You used that earlier, and suddenly that cat's out of the bag. Teams are a little bit more ready for it, but oh, works out beautifully and keeps it a lot more even than it otherwise could be. S4 getting fissured in here. And we'll just swing around the other way. Meanwhile, they're looking for the Enigma. It looks like off on the hunt. Meanwhile, top lane as well. The Weaver being pursued a bit. Looks like oh. everyone should escape. Oh, are they all going Enigma's on burning? Enigma's completely vacated the, the, uh -oh. the Dire Jungle. They may least. just rotate onto burning top lane. There's now four Radiant Heroes descending on him. This is going to be a tough, tough kill. Yeah. And uh, Ortiz just runs the right to the top. But they, they might this just take the tower. Now the Echo looking for first blood. IG, they got him. One last punch from that Shaker. Brains down the safe lane Razor. But Burning has to watch in horror as his tower falls unopposed. I mean, not the worst first case blood scenario for, first for uh, Weaver. He, he pushes things out, gives him that closer to his tier 2 farm potentially. and. They're going to force rotations back towards mid. 430 is pressuring the T1, raising down creep waves as possible, and yeah, there's TP back from Tiny. And this will open up the, the top lane once again for Burning's farm. So his farm's not been slowed down, but it does give Secret a bit of a gold boost to their whole team. That Shaker, early level 6, actually did He's make a difference. He's going to have though. a really fast blink at this rate. He actually got first blood, has boot soul ring, halfway that to a blink a dagger lot. already. Because he, he's actually CS pretty well, too. 26 yeah. CS against a Razor 1v1. That is impressive. This is good news for Lua. This is a hero that you wouldn't expect to be doing this well considering the matchup. Well, where do they go from here for IG? The Enigma has hit level 6 now. Gods, he's got the black hole. Normally, this is around the time when we see that first he, Enigma smoke gank. I wonder if he even goes for another kill on S4. We saw... Go back to the game where he's Slaughter and, like, you shut down the tempo control on S4 and Secret have had a lot of problems and... That could well be the play you try and make if you're IG, especially with no Radiant Vision around this bottom lane, the bottom river. In fact, very little radi Radiant Vision at all right now until we see Kuro plant some fresh Observer Wards for the team, so... 
Could be an opening. Secret having a little personal time off in the jungle. Arteezy looking to clear out a big stack. Yeah. He'll get the tether now. And not quite enough mana for a avalanche or a toss here. But he'll just get it done with auto attacks. And with that, he's going to close in on his first item. Puppy, top lane. He's got the grave. Needs to instantly TP out. He will do so. And Burning's going to have to let him go. Gets back to the fountain. Fountain will deal with the bug. And away he goes. Yep. ID about to make a move mid, though. They get they spam out the creep wave, get level 7 on 430, and they're going to go for a smoke here, it looks like. They've got Black Hole, level 7 Shadow Fiend, which is where this hero really starts to have his first early game peak. And they're going to try to find a kill on S4 and probably a tower to boot as well, if they can. Wrapping around towards the bottom lane. S4 has just got a second or two before he's going to die here to a potential fissure. Luo backs off into the side shop, and S4 are going to skate away. They're going to cast him. This was not really the best way to start the gank. They still have a fissure, holding it for a while. Faith taking heavy damage from the plasma field, basically max damage. Raises come out. S4 survives it. Not sure why Luo didn't just go. Seems like IG didn't have communication together. And now Chuan will be the one who pays the Piper, gets backed out of a TP, and goes down in the end. Miscommunication here, costing yeah. IG. It's the right time to go for that play. You, there's no level 6 on Kuro's Wisp, so you know you, you, there's no Wisp tiny relocated. And once that's available, you've really got to be scared. But IG either need to all commit at once, or I think Twine maybe need to wait, because the position of the Razor so close to the T1 where it could tuck himself under those trees made him very hard to initiate on there. It seemed like IG, the rest of IG maybe expecting Luo to fissure, Luo ducking into the side shop and then thinking, okay, we're going to let this wave push. Then when he goes to hit creeps, then we go on him with a wraparound. But they just weren't on the same page, and it, it cost them heavily. And that was a freebie if they did it right. Off of that, Kuro's going to, I believe, be about level 6 now. Gets, yeah, level 6 off of a, a neutral stack. So now Relocate comes into play. And this is where IG are going to look to sit back, defensively farm. They want to finish off the mech on Enigma. Shadow Fiend needs to tank up and go for some survivability as well, it feels like. May even just go for a straight BKB because of the fact there's a Wisp Tiny on the other team. But this is a game where IG cannot take fights very easily. What is Arteezy going to go for here? It looks like he was closing on a Blink Dagger if he wants it, and he is going to yeah. buy one. This is a good game for a Tiny Blink. They have the Razor and Darkseer as their cores. Not really the best initiators, but Tiny can be the man who starts things off in a big way. And you've got... I mean, honestly, all five heroes are fairly vulnerable to being bursted here on the IG side. There's no Bristleback or, you know, Timbersaw, no mega tanks by any means. He's got his eyes on his IG counterpart here at top lane. No, they say they both said they respected each other, but no respect shown here as Arteezy stops burning six feet underground. That is the way you want to unveil that blink. And gods, they have a relocate ready. They could easily look to jump around somewhere else. Oh, Luo, he's so close to finishing his own blink. 100 gold short. Not going to get relocated on, at least for now. But yeah, and that's the thing. You relocate in, sometimes heroes can just escape out of there. But when Arteezy has a blink, he can quickly get that fault. That's where you try relocate on someone like an Earthshaker with a blink, you can still kill him and catch him after the blink escape. Um, well, okay, has the quad. <laughs> Blinks into the trees. Like, I didn't blink into trees. What are you talking about, LD? Yeah, that, that, that didn't happen. IG, a lot more defensive now because they know the relocates up, as you mentioned. The blinks online, and this is just for opening up the map for Secret. They got the tier one earlier, and they're starting to take over the enemy jungle, threatening relocate ganks. They could look to go bottom if they want to protect Puppy. He's going to TP out, and Chuan, too late for the cast. Can't Meanwhile. stop it. Enigma brought down to the tower. The Arteezy Blink Dagger strikes again. It's paying for itself already. You get these two kills, you're taking a tower, you're denying the enemy farm. Very quickly this item is covered the initional 2250 in defense. Lua gets scouted out as well. That's very important information for Secret. They see the Blink Dagger. They also know he's sitting behind this mid lane. They say, okay, top lane pretty safe. They have the Observe Ward behind the tower. They've seen the Blink. They know it's coming their way. Secret are well prepared for IG now. I don't see. I think IG are going to smoke up again. I think this is not going to work. This is too obvious. The top lane's pushed in. There's a lane ward mid, though they don't know about that second part. The, just the fact that the top lane's in so far makes it kind of risky. And guys, I got to point out, Secret have some insane wards. They've got three wards over near the enemy woods, the enemy mid lane. IG are. It's almost impossible to make a move without being scouted. That I believe that smoke was actually under the ward as well with the with the radiant vision. It seemed to have been spotted, and you can see S4. Yeah, he's TP'd out. He saw that smoke. He knows it's coming his way. And he says, if they want this T1 tower. 
take it. We don't care. Well, this this tier one tower does not have any real value for Seeker right now. If they can find objectives at like a top lane or find find a kill on someone on the IG side, if IG try and defend this top tier two tower, it's very likely to lead to Seeker getting a couple of kills as well as the tier two tower. This tier, this tier one at bottom it just has. There's no purpose for Secret. No no real reason to even try and defend it. Well, tower will fall. IG happy to claim it, but they've almost lost a tier two in the process. Rather expensive tier one takedown. We'll continue pressing in. Here comes the TPs. A flurry of them actually. Shadow Fiend will also come in. Burning as well as 430, both joining the top lane and not going to be kind of squabbling over farm here. Yeah. While S4 just tits the tower mid. They kind of have to commit multiple TPs or it, it could go really badly. That's where a secret could look to jump in, use that blink avalanche or a blink toss back. Uh, they're going to take this tower mid, not denied, and they move the right way, dodging out from Chuan and Luo. And here comes RTZ up from the high ground. This could be the opening he's looking for out through the tree line, burning. Going to run in and try to scout them out a bit. Oh, oh, let's see where he goes. Any... He gets the swarm on Zai. Arteezy blinks back and there's no need. The shaker. No need for Secret to fight. They do get caught at three. Hero Fissure by Lua, but where's the follow up? They got nothing. Trying to run him down. They don't have that shaker blink just yet. Wall gets dropped. Burning still committing. Back, back away before he can echo. The Chuck comes out, forcing Lua off the fight, and Burning goes in. Will there be a relocate? No, he blinks away. Zai survives Fissure. Can't find anyone, and 430 also thwarted in his efforts to chase. They're trying so hard to find these kills, but just can't manage to do so. And that's big with this tiny Midas about to come out, and uh-oh, we might have a big clash here, IG. They're just committing so much to the five men, and they're getting nothing. Mm, IG will heal himself up with that Enigma mech, but... Should a fight break out? S4 has a mech of his own completed now on Razor, and Secret just positioning so well around the IG aggression. Hmm. It really looked like Arteezy won to Midas. He had saved up 1450 gold, and then he's like, I'm going to get Treads first. So, I guess the way this that, game's playing out, where there's a lot of aggression, I and mean, we're not seeing kills recently, but both teams are trying their hardest to find those kills. Yeah, he's really fighting his instincts as a carry player. When Arteezy came into prominence, it was always about just being more efficient at farming just better, and that's where him and Eternal Envy really bonded and had a lot of similarities in their carry style, but this is, although it might be against what Arteezy normally does, it does feel like the right build this game. Just more aggressive, more focused on map control, and not giving IG some room to breathe and, and potentially take advantage of greed. Yeah, well, Secret do pick up a medallion on Puppy. Not really a good Roshan lineup for their side, unfortunately. Arteezy going in, he gets caught with the Fissure, they're going to follow the this up. There's the Enchant Totem. Will there be a relocate? Oh, no, there's a dunk. He was too Curl far away for the home, tether. And he might come back and get caught. They're pinning him out. They know where Curl relocated from and just a little bit to the south. There you go. IG going to set up shop here. There's that little orb. Gets clubbed down. They lose the tiny. They lose the wisp. And it's up to S4 bottom mm. to try and get something out of this. Slightest bit of miscommunication. He, Arteezy really thought he had Kuro backing him up there for that dive under the tower. But Kuro was just out of range for the relocate out. And IG get a big couple of kills. That is a crucial turn for them. And with that, gods, 430, the blink already complete. Well, something maybe coming out from on the courier now. Just gives them breathing room more than anything. They were just being constantly pressured, and Secret were taking full advantage of the vision they have. In the top lane, the mid lane, in the dire jungle, IG had nowhere to really farm, nowhere to really get much done. But when Secret present you with a good couple of kills like that, that's time on those Observer Wards, which is going to get burnt down, even if IG haven't dewatered them. Secret aren't using their vision advantage to kind of increase their lead right now. They do get some good dewarding here from Puppy, I'm trying to limit the vision that IG have. And I do want to point out, still the vision is fantastic for Secret. I believe they still have that lane ward mid. Indeed they do. Puppy going to get caught again, but easy TP out. <laughs> We've seen this movie before. He'll make his way home. I'm gonna, at some point, it's like, I'm just going to buy an MKB to deal with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Burning is... I guess he's zoning him out and getting the free farm lane, but yeah, he's still going to be careful. That tiny combo can still burst him down if he's not careful. But for now, he's going decent farm. It has that protection with some vision even in the enemy jungle. But outside of that, the dire vision somewhat Wild lackluster. Bottom river. Zaya again with the cliff backs. He might just time lapse out of this one. We'll see from Bernie. He does. Still. <laughs> Burning is just kind of getting toyed ar around with in some ways. I mean, he's still fighting his farm. He's doing just fine. But I, I like the cheeky play of Zaya. She's like, yeah. you know what? I'm really good at this. 
And they want to go for a potential sneaky little play here. Oh, they get they the idol. Get, if they can get the Fissure on two into the potential Requiem, could be big. The Enchant Totem comes out. Kuroki still there. Arteezy engaging, and now the turn come. No, this no. is just space. They're no looking to create turn. space for other uh -oh. happenings on the map. I don't know how much space they've created. Maybe some for Kuro, the orbs. Oh. Oh. Barely missing, but backup's arriving. Here comes the cavalry. Back on two. Follow up on the 430. They're going to dunk him as well. Popping that chat opening wide open. Well, it is space in the end. They are working on the Roshan, but it's expensive space. Yeah. Two cores down. They were okay losing maybe the Earthshaker there, but losing Shadow Fiend as well. The TP Tower, which should have been denied earlier, and suddenly Seeker get a big gold boost, and IG still struggling to finish off Roshan. They finally get it, but it doesn't even feel like it was like the best use of their time. They could have been getting the same amount of gold farming the Radiant Jungle. They could have been pressuring this bottom tier two tower. They've got to make use out of this Aegis. It does get burning some breathing room as far as dealing with a potential tiny blink combo in a team fight and not getting blown up. Or if he gets blown up, he has a second line. Secret gonna back off now. They don't quite bring down that tier two mid, but they do some good damage and there seems to be a growing movement in their favor here in the audience. Well, team Secret with the top three net worth heroes right now, and the IG comeback has got to come through their farm distribution. They have got the Enigma up there, kind of as a fourth core hero in some ways, and you get Enigma up to a BKB. Oh, bottom lane, we're going to have a big jump in. They solo okay. kill the Dazzle, nicely done by Luo. Finally, they kill the stinking puppy. Man, he made it hard. Luo trying for a potential retreat, relocates coming out. It's going to cost him. Nothing comes for free in this life, says Arteezy. You can't have our puppy without paying the price. I mean, was it worth it? Burning's waiting it here at the top rune. He finds Kuro. Kuro comes in alone as well. Uh-oh. Uh, he's got a TP, but he's taking too much damage. Uh, this is a nice kill. Kuro trying to walk away with God. the tether, but he's gone. The mech had no mana. Almost got in range for the mech <laughs> save. That would have been some woe Dota shenanigans there. Well, the B god strikes back and... The IG Emperor wants to take down this top T1 tower with Aegis in hand. This is not the best timing for Secret to try and fight without Wisp, and it looks like Arteezy has other ideas as he TPs home, heals up, doesn't have a mana pool to really fight this top lane, and IG may get cold feet though. Uh, a lot we'll of heroes see. coming their they way. They really want this tower. They're committed fairly heavily to it. There's the back on two, burning, scurrying backwards. Some damage being stolen by 430. It's S4 in first. He's very tanky here. Burning. One more auto attack and he's done. Okay. Tower be denied. careful. Tower gets denied. Secret did commit five heroes for that. Yeah, it's still okay still. for IG. At this point, the monies would have been nice, but it, it denies Secret a tower, which gives them easy access into the dire jungle where Secret's made a lot of their plays happen. And they've been using this amazing vision around the Dire Jungle to great effect. And that's where taking out the T1 top tower, taking out the T1 mid tower, can help IG out quite a lot this game. I think this could be a really big item, Gods. The Deso comes out, and you're up against a Wisp. Used to be Weaver was one of the most popular carry picks to counter Wisp because you really can't get away from him. And they don't have the best lockdown. This item for Bernie is a bit risky but it could really turn the game. Yeah, he scouts out Secret in the jungle, reveals what was initially a smoke gank, and look at the damage from that side. Gets healed up a little bit, but he's gonna be forced way back, burning, gonna continue pursuit. Couple more auto attacks come out, denies his own bug, apparently, and then walks away. I don't know if that was necessary. <laughs> Some of these players are really trying to, to show that off. extra level. And he's going to get this T1 mid tower. Glyph comes out, but unless. The other thing is it helps them counter the rat of the tiny little. Yeah. They can go with the Enigma Eidolons, the Deso minus armor, and try to equalize the tower score a bit. So for this, this game still feeling fairly even between the two teams. Secret just with a small gold lead overall, but. We are advancing towards that late game, and that's where Secret not having an answer to the BKB Black Hole of Faith could become problematic. And Lua, ooh, I'd like oh. to say, he had all this money, I'm like, what do you even buy? Like, you could get a full stuff or something, but... You know, the last time that I saw a Midas on an Earthshaker was Lanham at MLG <laughs> I remember Columbus. That. He that farmed, it, he farmed like a super fast 2,000 gold. It's like, he's got such an early blink, and then he suddenly pulls out Midas, and we're just like, wait, what? Never forget, that was the Earthshaker game to end all Shaker games now. Some big shoes to fill for Luo. Let's see if he can get started on that route. He's going to try for it. Bottom lane, there's the dunk, the Requiem, but Arteezy survives it all. Pops the drum, he will fall. Well, they started off pretty hot, guys, so they get punished on the way out. In comes the Wisp. They back oh, in one. Won. They just barely miss on the second. That's definitely worth it for IG. Yep. And Shaker, who already bought and I believe used his Midas, 
in exchange for just the timing. The Fissure Wreck Room a bit awkward because 430 doesn't get the full damage when the Fissure kind of moved the Tiny, which is unfortunate. But luckily they still got the kill. When, they, when he survived that Wreck Room, I was worried for IG for a second that it may backfire. And the Earthshaker for a Tiny, not bad considering the Earthshaker had already spent his money on Midas, although actually um, got some reliable gold out of the kill. And another kill on Arteezy just slows down that Aghanim's progression and just generally the secret. They want to go for this maybe 30 minute death ball around the time they have like a BKB on Razor. They're going for a pipe as well as mech. Actually, pipe already completed with Darkseid uh -oh, having it. This is trouble for Kuro. The swarm comes out. He jumps extremely quickly as they relocate the grave. He's just going to turn on Puppy instead, oh who gosh. might not be able to get out of his own right. Burning getting pretty out of control here. Backing back though, very low. Time lapse and. He'll run the other way, but they're coming from the other direction. Arteezy's on His the His Aegis expires! Burning, gotta be careful here. There's a blink ready on Arteezy. Is he gonna find him? The back already used, though. They can't really lock him down. This is still bad for Burning. Some space created for now, but will it cost him Thank in the you. end? He warms under the trees. He's thinking about running back the other way. Arteezy hunting for him. Finds him all the way in the corner. He knew exactly where to look. And down goes Burning, punished for his own aggression. That... He, he that came was so close to getting a double kill. Instead, he feeds away the biggest possible kill that Seeker could get at this point in the game. That is not a very typical burning play. Normally, he's a bit safer, but we have seen him change up his playstyle a little bit in the new version. Really going for more aggressive plays, risky oh, ones. Uh oh, 4:30. Caught. He's going to get chucked, and immediately the TP canceled. There's nowhere to go with this one. Uh, maybe the Requiem. Can he turn it? Barely even tickles Arteezy out. He's just possible there. blink out. He may survive. Left yeah. Avalanche, and with that, Arteezy walks away, but they may still hunt him, gods, and now... Well, okay, he gets away. That was not expected. IG are going into the Radiant Jungle. They know the Tiny got left top lane. They're trying to find someone like the Wisp who came back alone. They're gonna have to blink on the Shaker soon, but... Nope, you know, not gonna find range. anything. Three seconds. But yeah, I, yeah, Burning's death there is a big story, but... I think just getting a bit too aggressive because of the Aegis, which he maybe just didn't think about the timing as he went in for the double kill. And it, it was such a long chase. By the time the Aegis wore off, he was like, okay, I guess I was in over my head. And IG... Definitely feels like a game where Burning mm. needs this next item he's building towards. The BKB is coming, and... There is some physical damage, but you're up against that avalanche toss, the vacuum. Those are the two most devastating spells that will catch him out of position, and if he gets hit by the stun, probably get him killed. Yeah. This game is going to be tense, because IG, they, they, I mean, they're not really behind. It's 1,000 gold lead. It's absolutely nothing. And just a BKB Blink Enigma can just win fights on its own. This is going to be such an important game for Kuro especially. The Grave is nice to maybe try and keep someone alive a bit longer, but if it's someone like Arteez being Grave and he dies anyways, it just gives him a bit more damage. But someone like Kuro can maybe relocate him back to the Thalman after he gets saved by a Grave, can relocate him out of a black hole, and there's so many big... This, this game largely comes down to Kuro's relocates for secret to win. Well, that was a very large stack of ancients that we just saw RTZ have his way with. But Darkseer already the pipe completed. He is extremely farmed on this hero's eye. He is without the Midas, too. Yeah, I, I was like, does he have a Midas? But I remember seeing him and... No, he's just killing creeps. 105. Got the top last hits, more last hits than anyone else in the game. How often do you say that with the Shadow Fiend and Tiny both in the same game? Whoa. Almost Fast finds the Shaker now. Top lane. There you go. Avalanche to start it off. Not going to be able to find the toss ball the burning. Looking to turn on the curl, but he's got to be careful about the clubbing. Time lapse back. He might make the move. No, he's worried about someone else coming in. He's setting into the tree line. And does Arteezy find him? He's got to chuck in one just late. Still, though, this is that stage of the game where Weaver cannot deal with the tiny wind. Doesn't have BKB. Still fairly frail just to right clicks as well as the nuke damage and, and has to run away and just play keep away for the most part. Worth noting, Faith has completed BKB and this is where IG may look to try and secure another Roshan around this. They've got Blink Force on Luo now. He's just making items out of nothing. BKB Black Hole and a Desolator on Weaver. This is a great Rosh line. The problem is Roshan has got a very long respawn time right now. <laughs> Haven't seen many kills in a while. Both teams doing a good job of playing keep away, protecting their cores, and nobody wanting to take a big risk. This is the deciding game five of a, one of the biggest grand finals there's been in some time in Dota 2, and nobody wants to throw it away on a foolish fight. And I think Secret worried about that potential Roche, and it's been some time since Roche could have respawned, and they've got this three-man unit who can smoke up, try and find kills, and then have the relocate in, but smoke revealed by Weaver mid. I, Secret's still okay with this. They were more worried about if they were at Roshan there, they had to get there and take that fight because they've got the Darkseid. They've got the better team fight, it feels like, right now. Unless a huge black hole comes. Oh, 
Here comes a Surge S4, the Enchant Totem off the mark. Luo gets four step back. He's gonna need to blink out. He can't in time. Now back back in. They have the black hole and they look to engage Fissure. Oh, oh, almost perfectly timed it. Pushes S4 around. And now they catch two. The Requiem Martinez, he gets caught in the middle of it. Survives for now. Here comes the follow-up from Burning. And Schwan again with the death war. But everyone from Secret survives Great. for now. Martinez he kept alive, finally brought down, but it's gonna cost the rest of the team. It's a trample for S4, the real winner of this fight. Bernie scurries back, he might He's go to clean up. He's going back in on S4, he finds one. Bernie, no more time lapse. I don't think he gets another here. The Wisp went back towards top in the end, and if that Fissure was, if he had just a little more life, he could have held it a bit longer, then gotten an actual stun off on the on the Razor. Could have killed him off sooner too, but. That fight is even as it gets. The yeah. gold changed 935 to 936. So a one gold advantage going IG's way. They actually had one more casualty on their side, but you lost your two big carries for Secret. Both Razor and Tiny for the Shadow Fiend and Burning getting big kills his way, which helped build towards his BKB. I'm not sure what happened with, with Kuro there. Normally, that's where you'd like to see the Wisp relocate the tiny back. Well, he, re no, he relocated into the fight from top lane, but somehow lost the tether with Overcharge, which made the Arteezy Tiny take a lot more damage I, than he would like to. I think to. he kind of got zoned away by yeah. like, the Fissure, the cask bouncing around, and you don't want to be, the Black yeah, Hole Yeah, you don't want to well. hit by the cast. You don't want to get caught in the Black Hole. At some point, you kind of just have to split off and hope to get a re-tether off mid-fight, but it was on cooldown oh, afterwards. Bottom lane? No. Nothing yet. Just puppy farming creeps. Something that the, the analysts talk about is, is puppy going to be allowed to just sit here and farm out waves? And it really hasn't been as much this game. He is way behind the enemy Enigma, as you would kind of expect in a normal game. He got so, so massive last game. Having 2k HP on your Dazzle just means he's never going to be, or it's very unlikely he's the first target your opponents want to go on. And then if you can sit back, your tanky, you're guaranteed to get graves off. It can really go a long way. Luo is setting up again. So, okay, he's got the Blink Force gods. IG don't want to fight until Black Hole. When are we going to see that, like, Aghanim's Refresher Veil Earthshaker? Is that the oh. build here? What do, you, what do you go for if you're a, a Midas Core Earthshaker? I think Axe is one of the weaker items on Earthshaker. Just doesn't really seem to boost up his damage enough, but Shivers, Refresher-type items... You don't like Veil? Veil's fine as well, but... It's good with the Shadow Feed especially, I feel. Another really cool item you can get is Shadow Blade, but they'll have a lot of detection already for the Weaver, but... Yeah. I, I think Shadow Blade's still viable. The, the super late game Shadow Blade is sweet, although I guess less so now that wards occupy the same item slot. It used to be that supports would really have issues like fitting both types of wards in. I try to catch up Puppy, but he managed to get into the right little tree spot where he didn't get scouted. S4 gonna TP away. I haven't seen many Razor games lately. I, I guess the next item for him is just going to be that, probably that Aghanim Scepter towards a Refresher. That's generally the, the build we see on Razor. Unless he feels he needs armor, because he's going to have minus armor from Weaver Desolate and minus armor from the Shadow Fiend. Uh -huh, and that's, that's where point. picking up a Plate Mail into either Shivers or AC could be very possible. He just bought the Shivers recipe. Oh no, Darkseid bought the Shivers recipe, so. All right. Maybe an AC for S4, but. That could be, especially with the, the Dazzle. That is right now their, their only real counter for the physical damage. I just don't entirely rely on physical damage. They've got Midnight Pulse, they've got the Shadow Fiend Requiem if they can time that with the Black Hole. And yeah, and Midnight Pulse got a little buff. I believe it was the, the cast point that got improved in this patch. I see a Pulse come out, possibly delaying some of the momentum, but right now, Secret and IG neck and neck here in our Game 5 Decider. Secret after that last fight, pulling about to a four to 5,000 gold lead, but nothing to write home about. It's a tense moment here. Has not been the highest kill game, but it feels like there's been constant action in the sense of teams moving around, finagling for kills, threatening for Roshan, trying to force the issue a little bit more towers. 11 to 8 the score. When it comes to net worth, it seems fairly even. Secret having the, the more farm top carries slash core heroes and the tiny Dark Seer, but more even spread over on the side of IG. We'll see what Secret's next move is going to be. It, it feels like neither team is going to be in a good position to push high ground anytime soon. Even around an Aegis, I imagine both teams will be very tentative to go for any kind of a high ground five man push. Tiny great at pushing, but I don't know if he'll... Maybe with an Aegis, you see Secret really try and siege the high ground, but pushing into a BKB Black Hole from Faith, who you've got to imagine is picking up a Blink Dagger as his next item and just about 600 gold away is oh, just... Yeah. Is not something that Team Secret have in mind. They I, could push around the Black Hole cooldown, though. 
At that point, I mean, what do you have? Toss? <laughs> That's not an easy way to cancel a BKB black hole. IG did not, I don't think they specified yet why there's a pause. Right. Sounds like it, it is team speak, apparently. So hopefully nothing too serious as uh, we'll get things back underway soon. This is a lot of luxury late game items coming out. You've got your Darks here being played by Zai. He's almost got a Shiva's Guard. You've got Tiny with a completed BKB. Items galore on the team secret side. IG, similar story. You've got your luxury items coming up. And Team Secret are going to have their work cut out for them when Burning also finishes the BKB, which he's got the Oak Club for. Well, folks, for those of you following along, either here live at the Warfield Theater or from home, we want to know what you think. Which team is ahead right now? Is it IG or is it Secret? To vote, go to RedBullBattlegrounds.com. I think I would, I would say Secret's ahead right now, but... <laughs> the, the, then the, our observer the question, cheats and shows the graph. Yeah. <laughs> God the bigger damn it, question Mott. is, like, who's actually going to come out on top? Because I think IG's draft is... Fine and almost like in not maybe not you never intend to be behind at 32 minutes in the game, but they've got a draft that's very comfortable playing from about a 5,000 gold deficit. As long as they've got they've got all their core items, that's the big thing here. They may be behind 5,000 gold, but they're not missing any big items. None of their heroes have been shut down this game, apart from maybe the Witch Doctor to some extent. It's not going to be the Chuan Witch Doctor we saw earlier today in that game three where they had the Witch Doctor plus Warlock duo. But outside of that, everyone else is very farmed on IG's side. So I feel like IG at least are going to be comfortable, even if they are slightly behind. And the outcome of this game is maybe closer to like 60-40 in secret, at secret advantage. At the same time, though, the when they've won with this Witch Doctor, Tuan has been a massive playmaker. And Someone else is going to have to step up. If he's if he's this poor, you're not yep. going to see a big death ward. Almost certainly that will get canceled. The vac, the avatars, potentially just right clicking him to death with this gigantic rock monster that Secret now possess. Faith and Lua have to step up. Those are the the two big heroes with a lot of playmaking potential. And burning, he's got a BKB. He's going to be able to stay alive in a fight and dish out damage, but he can't get kills on his own. The dazzle grave is a problem. There's ghost scepter. There's shivers on the dark sea. The raise is tinky with a mech. Tiny's got two point. 5k HP with a Wisp who can relocate and overcharge him. Weaver will not be able to get kills on his own. He's very reliant on Earthshaker or someone else. Later on in the game, though, Weaver gets very difficult for Secret to deal with. Again, they have no solution for BKB. Their physical damage is from a melee core who can be rather easily kited. I'm, almost, I'm starting to feel like IG just wants this to go late. They've got the Enigma Factor, as you mentioned. There's really no answer for that. They have oh. the, the big AoE team fight. The only trump card Secret really has is the Darkseer. Pop. B. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Lua just, he, he, he knows He's doing the math in his head. Play. He's like, maybe if I had a level 16 ulti, I could get this kill. We're going to show our TZ top. We'll hit a couple of creeps. Game really slows down. Both teams sensing that one key team fight could just lead to a Roche, to a couple of towers falling, and, and then it could fall apart very easily from there. And one of the secret draft weaknesses, even if they're getting map control, keeping lanes pushed out, have not got the best Roche killing lineup. No Assault Crest completed yet on our TZ. IG are decent. They've got the Shadow Fiendara, the... Yep, the a lot of minus armor. I think IG is pretty good. Yeah, but the secret side, especially right now where they've got a lot of map control, they've got sentries up in a lot of places, good vision, they've been de-warding IG, yeah. who it's, do not have a single ward up on the map right it's now. It's definitely tricky to get in there, but if, they, if they're able to, they should be able to bring it down. And here's the kind of item IG have maybe been waiting for. They can look to make a move towards that pit, I feel, with this. If they can position well around it and not allow secret to get like a good flank on them, this is very hard to contest for Secret. Oh, we're going to see dueling smokes come out. The swarm chucked in towards the pit. IG wrapping into it. They're going to let 430 go. He's just going to go right to work. Okay, Bernie's oh, there. This is, not gonna, it out this is not going to take long. And Secret, very little time to do anything about this. Now comes the plasma field. They get eyes on what's going on. And now RTZ engages. He finds Faith. He clubs him down despite the BKB. No buyback available. What a train wreck of a way to start the fight. They're going to lose Chuan as well. And with one fell swoop of that giant stick, RTZ has secured his team Roche and maybe more. That was just weird. The Dazzle scouted out the Enigma and the Earthshaker there on the high ground. And then they just stood there like, OK, we're just going to keep standing here protecting Roche. But if Secret engage, they're not going for the Roshan heroes, they're going for the Enigma. Enigma's the hero that's going to win them the fight. The Earthshaker's going to win them the fight. And RTZ said, I'm going to kill the Enigma before I try and contest Roshan, because there's no way I'm going into the Roshan pit and letting Enigma blink black hole me. Oh, the drums of Endurance getting plopped down on the ground because RTZ's got a bigger and better item to unveil. 
Uh, by the way, guys, I just have to say, Zai is still the leader in Network this game. You, you never see this unless there's a Midas Darks here. He has been really the star of the show for Secret. Him and, and Puppy with the, some of the Dazzle Graves we saw in the previous games. So a big team fight, a couple tier 2 towers, but even with Aegis, the push may in there for Secret, because Enigma Respawn didn't actually use Black Hole. And IG have a very potent high ground defense with Earthshaker as well as Enigma. Well, it looks like Secret may even just use this as a farming agent. They now have the top three heroes in net worth, and we'll see the plate melt coming out for Arteezy. He'll be the one to build the AC. Looks like it will just be a, a straightaway Aghanim Scepter. I believe that's for the Razor that's being built up. Yep, he's got it completed. Oh, boy. And, well, for Secret, a very fat Razor, a fat Tiny, and a gigantic Darkseer. Maybe they feel they have the late game. Mm, I feel like Arteezy may just be waiting on the Assault Chris, and Secret could say the word go and go for that high ground push. Especially if they can get a jump. He's holding onto the Blink Dagger over the drums in the hope that he can jump the Enigma or the Earthshaker, take out one of the key IG high ground defenders, and then suddenly you're pushing not only 5v4, but 5v4 without one of IG's most important heroes in the Earthshaker and Enigma to, to defend your base. If anything, you'd rather pick off these heroes than someone like a Weaver because I, mean, I guess they're probably equally important, but you really need the big team fight that those two heroes provide. Now, oh, Zai, the next item is going to be a. It looks like a. Bloodstone? He's going for the Octarine Core, I think. Oh, say. oh, yeah, it could be. Just sitting on the Soul Rain, it looks like. May not upgrade it. That is definitely not an item we see very often. Get the reduced cooldown. The life still not so important, but reduced cooldown on your wall, your vacuum. Vacuum especially, an amazing teamfight spell. Hey, this is, the, this is the counter to Ice Frog. <laughs> Every patch he seems to add to that cooldown, but... Doctor in core, the way to bring things back into balance. We'll see what Zai ends up building, but I think you're right that it, it offers you a lot more utility. You don't normally have huge mana issues on Darkseer. And just 700 gold short if that is the item he's going for. And yeah, across the board, a Secret just getting very big late game luxury items. IG lose a fight, they lose potential take Roshan. And 430, you're going to forgo having buyback to buy a Talisman of Evasion. So he's going to play very cautiously. But if anything, you want him being the one focused. Because that just makes Luo as well as Fate's life a lot easier to get off their ulties when Secret are focusing their efforts on someone like the Shadow Fiend or the Weaver. Arteezy blinking in here in the bottom lane. And he's going to start hitting creeps. It's go time. The team's behind him. But so too is IG sweeping around from the side. They got the Fissure to start. They're going to find Dark Tour. They need to bring him down quickly, though. That Wisp is in position. Arteezy popping the BKB, going to work. Where's the relocate? No, doesn't need it yet. Has the Aegis. And now they look for round two. Luo caught out on the sidelines. Now the Requiem comes. The Black Hole was waiting for Arteezy. It catches out Kuro, but kept alive by the Mech. They're going to turn the fight. They bring down Sai as well. Three dead instant buyback. IG unable to deal with two lives on the tanky rock man. And 430 barely blinks out of somehow a five they heroes. Might, they might lose burning as well. Fissure on two, but Arteezy chucks him actually forward. Wants to club uh -huh. Luo instead. A little bit discombobulated. You can't blink. As they continue the chase, they're going to cheat as Luo, and he may die again. Chuck tossing down. It's a dieback. 80 seconds on the side. Secret are going to push high ground. This could be it. Secret looking at a potential full lane of Rex. There's no black hole. There's no shaker for 70. It could be more gods. This is all your big ulties on cooldown. Not just the black hole, but Death Dwarf, Requiem of Souls. This is at least one lane of racks and IG running out of answers to the secret point. Oh, they're gonna find another jam. 430 down for the count. And no buyback there either. If secret know it, if they've done the math, they could go for the win right here. Could this be their first ever land win, gods? They've never taken an offline tournament, but they're about to here. It looks like a battleground, smashing through the bottom lane, straight onto mid. The tier four is about to fall, and Secret are your Red Bull battleground Dota 2 champions, the first ever in the world. Game one, it was the Drove Visage, a classic. This game